Unique recap, House of the Dragon has captivated audiences with its intricate characters and intense drama, reminiscent of what made Game of Thrones a global phenomenon. The prequel series, set nearly 200 years before the events of Game of Thrones, has managed to create compelling narratives that keep viewers hooked. However, one aspect that seems to be falling flat is the continued emphasis on the Song of Ice and Fire prophecy. Game of Thrones is well remembered for its epic battle sequences like the Battle of Blackwater, the Battle at Hard Home, and the Battle of the Bastards. However, what truly set the series apart were the intimate one-on-one -on -one scenes that delved into character motivations and conflicts. These quieter moments allowed actors like Peter Dinklage and Lena Headey to showcase their talents, creating a rich tapestry of psychological drama that unfolded before the battles even began. House of the Dragon follows in these footsteps, using psychological tension to drive the story forward. The reunion of Renera Targaryen, Emma Darcy, and Alison Hightower, Olivia Cook, in Season 2, Episode 3, was a prime example of this. Despite the somewhat implausible logistics of both Daemon and Renera sneaking into King's Landing, the scene delivered a high-stakes, tension-filled encounter. These two characters, who have been at odds since a violent altercation in Season 1, finally confront each other, bringing years of proxy warfare to a head, this reunion highlights the show's strength in character-driven drama. However, it also reintroduces an element from Game of Thrones that has proven problematic, prophecies. The reliance on prophecies, particularly the Song of Ice and Fire, has historically been a double-edged sword. In Game of Thrones, these prophecies often bogged down the narrative. While George R. R. Martin skillfully used them in his books to set characters on faithful paths, the show's adaptation struggled to balance them with the element of surprise, the fulfillment of prophecies can be anticlimactic if they play out as expected, and attempts to subvert them can sometimes feel forced or convoluted. This issue was apparent in Game of Thrones with prophecies like Azor Ahai and the Stallion that mounts the world, which either only partially came true or were entirely abandoned. The most significant prophecy, the prince who was promised, predicted a Targaryen would unite the realm against the White Walkers. However, the show deviated from this, leaving fans divided over the prophecy's role and resolution. Early in House of the Dragon, the reintroduction of this prophecy felt like a callback to its predecessor's most contentious elements. The prince who was promised, or the Song of Ice and Fire, was central to Game of Thrones but ultimately did not drive the narrative to a satisfying conclusion. Jon Snow, a Targaryen, did not become king, nor did he defeat the Night King Arya Stark did the overemphasis on this prophecy in House of the Dragon risks repeating these mistakes. While it ties the prequel to the original series, it also brings with it the narrative pitfalls that plagued Game of Thrones. The strength of House of the Dragon lies in its character-driven stories and intense interpersonal drama. To truly succeed, it should focus on these elements rather than leaning too heavily on prophecies that may not deliver the same impact on screen as they do on the page. Die in conclusion, while the Song of Ice and Fire prophecy adds a layer of connection between House of the Dragon and Game of Thrones, its effectiveness remains questionable. The show's success will ultimately depend on its ability to craft compelling, character-driven narratives without over-relying on the prophecies that once both defined and hindered its predecessor.